welcome everyone uh, to, to the uh, to the webinar. We're really excited to, to have everyone here for strengthening your advocacy work through inclusive creative fun. My name is Bill Nesper. I'm the executive director of the League of American Bicyclists. Uh, the League is the national organization of individuals, state and local organizations, and businesses leading the movement to build a bicycle-friendly America for everyone. And the League staff, is, our role is to um, is to really be a lens that reflects and magnifies the work of the thousands of members and allies that are demanding better bicycling for all across the country. We're committed to strengthening your work. And a huge part of this great work that's being accomplished at the local level uh, is, is in building uh, strong bike cultures and not forgetting the fun and the joy of biking and what it, uh, it will unlock for so many people. So uh, we're really thrilled to, to have partnered with Film by Bike to bring this excellent group together uh, to talk about the importance of fun in bicycling advocacy efforts and also and, and, and how hosting a bike, uh, Film by Bike event will strengthen your bike community and raise important funds. Just a little bit of housekeeping first. Um, everyone except that the presenters are, are muted. Um, I'm going to mute myself here in a minute too, um, but but please use uh, the questions box uh, in that go to webinar control panel there. Um, if you have questions, there's going to be a portion of today's webinar that uh, where these will be answered um, and brought into the conversation. Um, the session is being recorded, so it will be shared after and available on on our website, uh, bikeleague.org. Um, and thank you all for being here and again for the work you're doing to make bicycling better for all people. So it's my pleasure to introduce the presenters today. Uh, first, Aileen, uh, Aileen Crotty is the founder and festival director of Film by Bike, a film festival featuring the world's best bike movies. Aileen is one of the people who helped shape the bike fun movement that has helped Portland blossom um, into a mature bike culture that it is today. After founding Critical Mass in her college town of Champaign, Illinois, Aileen moved to Portland for its bike friendliness. Many people do, I hear. Uh, Portland's early days of critical mass were a networking opportunity for bike enthusiasts eager to meet others who shared their passion for bikes at a time when cycling was less common. Uh, this energized a community of riders that saw the need for activities that weren't as serious as bike lobbying efforts um, and maybe weren't, weren't as controversial as, 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 critical, uh, as critical mass. And the result has been a month long bike fun celebration that led to the permanent formation of Portland's grassroots organization shift. So SHIFT is still vibrant 17 years later and Portland continues to progress as a bicycle friendly community, which is a strong testament to the importance of using fun activities to strengthen a bike community. Aileen comes from an experiential art background and worked as an event manager for 13 years. Film by Bike combines her love of artistic endeavors, community building, and event experiences that give people a momentary escape from the, from the rigors of daily life. Aileen catapults those efforts even further by using Film by Bike as a tool to inspire people to ride bikes. Then we have uh, Victoria Armstrong. Vicky is, is, a, is the director and co-founder of Bike Walk Tompkins based in Ithaca, New York. She's played a critical role in developing bike advocacy projects for Ithaca, including Bike to Work Day since 2011, Streets Alive, uh, an open streets event since 2012, and Streets Alive Film Festival, uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. Uh, she, has draw, uh, she was drawn into the world of urban biking back in 1990 in Toronto when she joined the team that dreamed, dreamed up the magnificently creative fundraiser uh, of rideable works and art entitled Recycled Bike Art Auction. She co-created a film uh, about this project, which was first screened um, where I am in Washington, D.C. at the 1990 Pro, Pro, Bike, Pro Bike Conference. Um, to this day, she can be found at the Confluence of Bikes, Art, music, dance, and politically astute change-making. And then Cynthia Gibson is the executive director of the Idaho Bike Walk Alliance. Cynthia has lived in Boise for the last 20 plus years after leaving the East Coast congestion behind. She has loved every single moment in Idaho and now considers this vast state her home. Cynthia is passionate about being outdoors, whether she is traveling to work or recreating in Idaho's wilderness. Working for Idaho Bike Walk Alliance allows her to share her love to move more and drive less which she relishes every day. Now that she has landed her dream job, she enjoys connecting with the amazing advocates throughout the state to make their community safer, healthier, and more livable. Prior to this position, she worked as in media sales in Boise. She liked that job too, but it required daily driving. And when she isn't working, you can find Cynthia in the foothills with her dogs, Maggie and Ollie. Thank you each for being here with us and sharing your knowledge and experience with all of us. Aileen, over to you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for that introduction, Bill. And welcome, everyone, to today's webinar. 
I know a lot of you out there do really important work, and a lot of times it's really hard work. I'm here to remind you and let you know that it's also okay to have a little fun. In fact, more than okay, it's really crucial. Now, a little bit more about Film by Bike. We are a festival that features the world's best bike movies. We work with about 70 filmmakers every year. We host a three-day film festival here in Portland every May. And for 17 years, we've been bringing people together to celebrate cycling and experience a magical weekend in the city, a little bit of an escape from the daily grind. After our Portland Festival wraps up, we then send our movie collections worldwide. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that today. We'll be talking with Cynthia and Vicki about their experiences with that as well. For those of you who wear many hats and feel like you have a lot to juggle, I'm also here to let you know I can sympathize. Um, in addition to running Film by Bike, I also run the website orbike.com. It promotes cycling events here in Oregon. I'm the author of Best Bike Rides in Portland, a guidebook put out by Falcon Press. I also run a social media agency that's focused on getting people excited and inspired about brands, events, projects, and products. And I'm one of the people who helped mold Portland into the bike-friendly city, the world-renowned bike-friendly city that it is today. And before we get too deep into things, I want to mention a few terms that you've already heard us bantering around a little bit, bike culture and bike community. So bike culture, excuse me, bike community, let's go with that one first, is really the people, the people who ride bikes in a region, especially when they identify as being a part of that community. I think it's an important term and I encourage all of us to embrace it. Bike culture is the culture around the activity of riding bikes. It's the arts, the music, the stickers, patches, the t-shirts people make, the creative elements, the unique people, that vibrancy and passion and that attitude. It's also the customs, the language, and the achievements. These terms, bike culture, bike community, these terms are a sense of pride. They really help us identify as part of a movement. So I encourage all of you to really embrace these terms and begin using them if you are not already. They provide great cohesion for everything we're doing. Now we've learned the value of bike fun here in Portland. Some of you may know that we're a rather innovative city in many ways, and I'm not just talking about crazy donuts and food carts, but also in the realm of the infrastructure we've implemented, putting in green boxes at intersections so cyclists can sit in front of a car at a stoplight. We started Sunday Parkways, which is our version of Sunday streets or open streets. We modeled that after Bogota, Colombia, and we were one of the first cities in the United States to do it and really consistently do it. Now, none of that work, that infrastructure work and that interesting city-driven events, those weren't necessarily easy. They also really weren't all that challenging, especially when it comes to how the city residents approach these concepts. Um, so I would say that one of the reasons we've been able to take this leap of faith and get to where we are is strongly because of having this bike fun element that's got people energized about cycling. So how can you foster this energy where you are? And I wanna make sure you all feel included in this project today because we're talking about your region and your style. Everyone's got a different approach. Every city has a different culture and different beliefs and the ways they move through the city. So um, I'd love to hear from some of you where you're from. If you guys wanna tap, type that in the chat window, we can get a sense of where people are coming from today. And I also wanna let you know that I'm not giving you exact answers or exactly telling you to script out what things should be, but instead giving you some ideas and a framework. And I'm certainly not here to tell you that the Portland way is necessarily the way you should do this where you are. I'm just using this as an example of something that worked really well for us here. Now, overarching all of this, I'm a firm believer that the reason we have been able to develop into a bike-friendly city and what every city can benefit from is a multi-tiered approach. You've got the city infrastructure, city support infrastructure, 
It doesn't have to be a complete network of bike lanes and other infrastructure. Even just one bike lane signifies something really special, and it's an identifier of a movement that is taking hold. Also, the retail is really, really important. I know some people feel like retail is on the way out, but there, nothing compares to that in-person experience of asking questions at a bike shop. A place to gather, rides can leave from there, and of course, we need a place to get our bikes fixed, because if you're like me, You'd rather just bring it to an awesome mechanic to get your bike fixed. So retail, city support, the advocacy work that many of you do is so important. Lobbying at the governmental level, that is hard work and it's important work. We benefited also from having a community that is inclined towards the outdoors in health. So you've got the city support and infrastructure, you've got retail, You've got advocates lobbying, that's such important work. You've got a city that is inclined towards the outdoors. And then layered on top of all that is the fun element. So it, all those elements working together really can build towards a vibrant bike city. So we keep talking about fun, bike fun, but really what is it? Well, quite simply bike fun is having fun on a bike. It's non-competitive, it's free events, whimsical activities. It's taking someone's interest and putting it on wheels and then inviting some others to come along. It's opportunities to socialize off the bike and it's opportunities for expressing creativity on the bike. Bike fun is organized, but it's not institutionalized or shouldn't really be overly regulated activities. You wanna keep it really approachable. Now, some examples of bike fun, one of my favorites is this ride that started years ago in Portland, still exists. It's a heritage trees ride. It's a woman who loved heritage trees and loved riding bikes and wanted to bring people around the city to experience her knowledge of these beautiful trees we have throughout the city. So taking these two interests and combining them and inviting others along. It could be something like a mural tour with a similar format or Kittical Mass, a worldwide movement of Kittical Mass is giving parents an opportunity to get together, have fun on bikes with their kids and ask other parents how they do what they do, how they carry their kids and talk through the challenges that they face. So the way these events come together is really just anyone who has the idea. It could be anyone, anyone who's organized, it should be a good leader, someone who not only has people's safety in mind, but also wants to craft an overall awesome event experience and leave people inspired and excited to be riding bikes. So those of you who have tuned in who are from bike advocacy organizations, you guys are primed to take the lead in this department. When bike advocacy organizations allocate some time and resources towards bike fun, it's a great way to stay vibrant and relevant and keep your organization on the minds of your members and the other folks in your community. It doesn't take a lot to get bike fun events started. You need some gumption, some creativity, a way to get the word out. In most cases, you don't need insurance. I am not legal counsel, so I have to make that disclaimer. But generally, the assumption is if people are not paying for an activity, then there is less of an assumption of liability. Again, I'm not legal counsel, but you may not need permits. Um, many areas, if you're just doing a free fun event, there's no need for a permit, depending on your local regulations. Bike fun events shouldn't have any cost associated with them, and it could be as simple as a beer social, a tour of donut shops, or something really basic like that. Now, I believe that in all the work that we do to get people excited about bikes, bike Fun is really where the sweetening and the magic happens. It's the human side of things. Not everyone wants to go to meetings and be lobbying at the governmental level, though that has merit. And a lot of cyclists approach advocacy and activism in a way that's just not inclusive. I mean, have any of you ever heard one of those enthusiastic cyclists get a little bit preachy or a little bit angry even? I mean, how much do you really think that endears people to the cause and gets people excited to ride bikes. And then along with that, you know, there are a lot of people who are left out of the conversation, a lot of groups that are left out of the conversation when it comes to cycling, yet they love riding bikes or they could love riding bikes. 
And bike fun is also not about performance. It's not about what type of bike you ride in most cases. It doesn't matter if you're fast or slow when you're going on a casual ride through the city or going to a, a similar bike event. So it really removes that barrier of skill level, which I think is so crucial to this type of work. And it allows all types to come and experience and celebrate together. Bike fun really does break down barriers through this fun human interaction. And when we started here in Portland, with a lot of our efforts in the early 2000s, you know, at its core, we were just so hungry to be in a space with other people who understood our passion for bikes. So we started creating all sorts of crazy events just as an excuse to hang out with other people who understood why we love cycling as much as we do. One of the most valuable things about bike fun events and these people gathering experiences is that it really creates a shared vocabulary around what we're doing to encourage people to ride bikes. So when we lobby, when we talk to the media, talk to our neighbors and coworkers, we're using a cohesive shared vocabulary, which really legitimizes the work that we're doing. It's also great, as I've mentioned, like with Kitical Mass, to be at these events and share resources. You know, you can go online, you can do all the research you want to figure out what is a bike pannier and what's the best one to use. But I think it's way more fun to do that in person. You see people roll up to an event, you see something they're doing and you ask them, hey, what is that on the back of your bike? Oh, a pannier, what's a pannier? Is it waterproof? Does it need to be waterproof? Those little micro conversations that happen at bike events, I think are so fascinating and full of so much meat and heart and so valuable. It makes it a really fun way to hone our bike lives and to set ourselves up for success out there on the road. Now, bike fun really involves minimal infrastructure. And if you get nothing else out of this webinar, I want to ensure you all that bike fun is a really huge investment on a return on your investment worth your time and worth putting some effort into. The goal of bike fun really is just to give people a place to gather, make connections, share resources. And there is no one approach to making your city bike friendly. Bike fun is just one part of that puzzle, but I think it is a very important one. Now, in just a little bit, we're gonna be talking with some special guests that are here, Cynthia and Vicky, and we're gonna be talking a little bit more about the Film by Bike Film Festival. For us at Film by Bike, we love bike fun. In fact, we like to add a little celebration to all of that as well. We like to thank and honor those who contribute to our bike community here in Portland, give them an awesome weekend experience and really help them feel proud to be a part of our bike community. We also want to give them the awareness that they're part of something big, they're part of a movement. So how are we still here 18 years later? I don't know, sometimes I wonder. Um, it's been a wild ride to get to where we are today. Biking has grown in popularity worldwide and we've really been there every step of the way. I have a strong passion for what we're doing. I know it makes a difference. I hear this from people every week. In fact, I had this really neat experience uh, meeting some women at our festival this year, just last May, they said it's three women, they're great friends, they come to film my bike every year, they watch the movies, they buy the t-shirt, they put their t-shirts on after the festival, they go for a bike ride, then they hang out and have lunch and beers afterwards, and they brainstorm where they wanna go on a bike tour or a bike adventure in the summertime. And they're really using those movies as a way to inspire them to push themselves further and do something interesting as a team. I just think that's so fun. It was really great meeting them at the festival. We're really also big on creating an authentic and heartfelt event. It's well organized, something that cyclists deserve. We want to give them a great experience so that they know they should be proud to be a part of this bike movement. Our event really is filled with a lot of strong pride. And we're trying our best to be reflecting the bike community's values through everything we do. And we also show top-notch films. So if, I'm not sure if any of you out there have seen Film by Bike, but let us know in the chat window. I'd love to know if any of you have seen Film by Bike. The movies we show are so impressive and we're endlessly grateful to our broad international community of filmmakers who share their work with us. And they're always turning out 
excellent work year after year. We're always amazed with the films that we have the opportunity to show. Uh, another part of our success has been that we are really dedicated towards building alliances and partnerships. We're so excited to be here with the Bike League today. That's a big part of what we're invested in, leveraging our resources and also being really resourceful. We're scrappy. You know, we've gotten here through lots of gumption, hard work and creativity, and we're so proud to be here. In fact, in a lot of ways, I think we are more relevant than ever. And there is no doubt that the Bike Advocacy Toolkit must include fun. If you're looking for a way to insert a little fun in your bike community, Film by Bike is an easy option. So we've talked about the way that other cities are hosting Film by Bike. And basically what we do is we set up a system that allows you to get the screening rights to Film by Bike. We take what we show here in Portland, we whittle that down into two smaller collections that go on the road. We provide all the promotional graphics, trailers, hand-holding support. We talk really closely with a lot of our hosts to figure out what's working for them so that we can share that information with you as you put your event together, sharing best practices, timelines, and all that type of stuff as well. We make it affordable. We, of course, have nonprofits in mind always with everything we're doing, and we also provide grants. Now, a few fun examples of the folks who are hosting Film by Bike. One of my favorites is Bendigo, Australia. They are branding themselves as the most bike-friendly city in all of Australia. They host a big weekend event every fall, and they show Film by Bike as a part of that festival. They really believe that showing Film by Bike is a great way to showcase their community, that they're part of a broader movement. Once in Cork, Ireland, a few years back, they hosted Film My Bike as a way to thank their bike community for all the great work through a summer season. Chicago also does a big show as a way to thank their bike community, and they use that as a way to raise awareness and funds for World Bicycle Relief. That Chicago show is so much fun. In Dallas, the Dallas Public Library hosts Film My Bike as a way to open a dialogue about cycling. So they show the films and then they have a panel discussion afterwards. And then all throughout the United States, youth mountain bikers who are affiliated with NICA, the National Interscholastic Cycling Association, are hosting film by bike events as a way to raise funds for their teams, to be able to afford their bikes and their kits and to be able to get there and shred on the trails and really set those kids up for success riding bikes. So lots of different and interesting organizations are hosting Film by Bike all throughout the year. I really realized we were on to something with this concept of Film by Bike on tour when two specific events happened. Um, the first was about six years ago or so, Ithaca hosted Film by Bike as part of Streets Alive. Vicky's here with us today. Um, that event was to help get people moving, get the community moving and active. They wanted to show movies. We had movies. The attendees loved it. We made their job easier. And here we are still working together to this day. That really, that event really gave us the energy to continue doing what we're doing. And then in January, I traveled to Idaho to see the third film by Bike Boise hosted by the Idaho Walk Bike Alliance. And it was, it, was, it was incredible. It was a nearly sold out show in this gigantic historic theater. There were about 700 attendees. So that was great. The numbers looked good, there's that. But it was really this vibrancy and passion in that theater, a huge crew of people who love bikes all in one space together. It didn't matter if they were roadies, or mountain bikers, or what, or new to biking, everyone was sitting in the theater together enjoying the movies. It was such a powerful experience, and I was so fortunate to have been able to go and experience that. So today I thought it would be fun to invite on Vicki from the director of Bike Walk Thompson, and also Cynthia Gibson, who is the director of the Idaho Bike Walk, oh, Walk Bike Alliance. I always get your two words mixed up. So thanks, you guys. It's so great to have you here with us today. 
Now, I know I've gone over a lot of broad overview of film by bike and of bike act, um, advocacy and bike fun in general. So I wanted to give you two a quick opportunity to give us an overview of your organizations. And I'd like to start with you, Cynthia, um, just to tell us a little bit more about the Idaho Walk Bike Alliance and what you're focused on these days and what your organization is all about. Did we lose Cynthia or is she still here? Um, my internet's a little bit unstable. I'm sorry. I'm back. Oh, no, it's okay. Okay, great. Perfect timing. Um, so just tell us a little bit about what you guys are up to these days in Idaho. Oh, okay, great. Um, first of all, thanks, Aileen and Bill, for having me as part of this. This is exciting for us. Um, our organization is statewide, so we spend a lot of time working on legislation. And our session just, we have a three month session, so it just ended in early April. And um, Currently, I'm traveling around the state visiting communities um, who've received some funding um, to help improve walkability and bikeability for small town Idaho. So that's our, our focus. We are state organization. Um, we work a lot in small rural communities, but our um, main office is headquartered in Boise near the state capitol. Excellent. And how about you, Vicki? What is Bike Walk Tompkins all about? Um, we're about so much, it's so hard to describe, but do I get to show a few things or should yeah. I just, yeah, okay, you can do that. um, Bill will I'll work in magic. Was. just a couple of things from this one. Aileen, you have I control, have to, so I have to, hand, you have to hand it over to her. Oh, uh, I have to hand it over. Um, I don't know if I'll ever be able to handle it back. <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay. So if I do this. Will you guys see it? Oh, show my screen. So I'm going to show you the boringest one I could do first, um, if I can. Here we go. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Bike Walk Tompkins? Yeah, it looks good. Great. So first, I just want to thank you, Aileen and Bill. And Aileen, I feel like you're channeling or actually better articulating a lot of the ways we think around here and, we, and me. And I just so appreciate everything you do. I mean, it's incredible. Very inspiring. Thank you. Um, so um, we've been Bike Walk Tompkins officially since 2014, but a lot of the stuff we do actually happened beforehand, sort of our foundational projects. So like a lot of organizations, we're looking to make it safer and convenient for people of all ages and abilities. Um, so making sure everybody in our community feels included and um, it works for them no matter what their barriers are in terms of white Biking and walking, yes, thanks. So I have a quick list here of things we do. Streets Alive, Streets Alive Film Festival, Ithaca Bike Champions, Bike Education, we're just starting that now, Bike Education Support, Bike Share, we have one of those. That's a long story, but I won't go into it. Bike Lending Library, Blueprint for Better Bicycling and Advocacy, and you can see all that stuff. But um, what I'll do is jump to a more interesting screen, if I can do that. Yeah, so, so if, I think you were going to say, like, what are you guys excited about? So in 2012, we were really excited about turning the tables on it being not so adversarial um, in our community. And we started with an open streets event. And let's see, um, we called it Streets Alive. And as you can see, there's a lot of handmade stuff going on. And um, we closed the streets and made that a way to build community and also to have that radical experience. Like, what would it be like if you could just go safely anywhere? Um, so that's Streets Alive. It included a lot of people. Uh, that's first we had to get volunteers and we had 75 of them. So that just created a community right there by getting volunteers. And hopefully these look fun to you too. Do you see my control panel? Do I need to get rid of that? No, you're you're good. Okay, thanks. As you guys already have learned. I've been doing this a long time, but I'm not a technical wizard. Um, this is another view of Streets Alive. And then, so that's what we were, have been excited about. And um, I'm sorry, I'm distracted by the world of computers. <laughs> so I hope people are seeing some of this. Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. So what we're excited about now and what we're really about now is taking that same feeling that we've created at Streets Alive and um, bringing it to everything we do. In 2017, we changed our organization by 
becoming much bigger. We got a great big grant from NYSERDA. We were able to hire new staff and that just meant our programming just really went um, much higher and we could do a whole bunch of new things. So in 2018, we've been doing, we brought, we facilitated bringing line, line bikes to Ithaca, so bike share, and we were the first ones to have dockless in the community. And that was, all of a sudden, everybody's talking about bikes, you know, completely changed changed the, the format here and the, the feeling. We also started bike champions who were the kind of people that could outreach into communities we wouldn't normally reach. And they, they did, I think, 35 individual unique events. So we had just so much more energy going into it. And still everything we do, we try to be positive, tenacious, fun as much as we, as we can. Um, That's great. And, but the thing that I really wanted to show was when we talk about the film festival. So let me know when I should talk about the film festival. Because <laughs> yeah, so, it's really part yeah, of what so we do. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about how Film by Bike has worked into the advocacy work that your community is doing and how it's been um, a part of what you, all these efforts that you're discussing. Okay, great, because it has been so important to us. So I'm going to show you our first po poster. And hopefully, is that you see it all? Yeah. This is the poster. So, so back in 2014, we'd done Streets Alive two times, three times, and we were looking for a way to really build the movement and also create an, an advocacy organization. So we didn't exist yet. We, we existed in different um, other organizations as a project, um, as a collaborative project. So our first Streets Alive Film Festival, we worked with Aileen and um, Tom Knipe was one of our co-founders and he had lived in Portland. So he knew Aileen personally and spoke very highly of her and said, we got to bring film by bike to Ithaca. Um, he had done it a little bit for a conference prior, but this was the first time we did this as the advocacy or organization that didn't have a name yet. So we did it in March because it's really gray here and we wanted to inspire people and get everyone together. And I think we set a really good format because we've done it annually ever since. That's we, so um, great. We, so we show, as you can see on the, on the poster, the reason I wanted to put up the poster is you can see film by bike up there in the left, middle left. Um, we brought film by bike. We also curated some of our own, particularly street films that Clarence Eckerson and team have, have made where they give the language of some of the things and the inspiration and the, the visuals to some of the things we're trying to advocate for. So we would do a combination of street films and a few other things. Then we'd have a big intermission and we'd have a raffle, very, very important piece. Um, and also a chance for people to have conversation, to meet others who are in the community, uh, are interested in seeing biking and walking, and particularly biking, um, much healthier here. The raffle meant that this helped us develop our movement. So the only time at Streets Alive, we don't get anybody's information other than the volunteers and thousands of people come out. But at the film festival, we could actually get their emails, know a little bit more about them. And that developed our movement. The core of our e-news list that then grew to a thousand people really started with the people that came to the film festival, signed up because they wanted to win a prize, which was also really fun to do at the intermission. So we made it as entertaining as possible and it's grown and morphed a little bit. We kind of have stuck to that program, but as film by bike has matured and as we did, we now do our own curation at the beginning. We've had some local films added to the mix, which is because it's been inspired by, by the film festival. And then we have our intermission and then we get to put our feet up and watch <laughs> the film by bike program that gets sent great to us. And it works out really, really well from an organizational point of view. Um, for us as organizers, it actually really works. It's an indoor thing. That's way easier than an outdoor thing. And it's been really popular. So I highly recommend people considering this as one of the things they do through their year. It's It becomes not so hard to do as you do it. And it's one of the things that I find most um, inspiring when I need the inspiration. And I think other people do too. 
Yeah, that's so great to hear. Thanks for sharing all of that, Vicki. Now, for yeah. those of you who are tuning in, we will be opening this up to your questions. If you have questions about bike advocacy, how we do these bike fun events, how Film by Bike works, there's a ton of information about booking a show on our website, but we're happy to talk through some of that information here today. You can use the questions box on your GoToWebinar to ask questions of us, and we'll answer those along the way. Um, and I think we might be done with sharing screen. So if you'd like, Bill, I think you can turn that off. I don't think we need that anymore. Um, I also wanted to go back to you, Cynthia, for a little bit to talk about what your show in Boise has been like, what the result of your Film by Bike event has been, and what it's like in the theater during that event. Oh, thanks, Aileen. So we've done our Film by Bike for three years. In the first year, we started out really small. Um, it, it started as just a um, thought that we had and we were talking to one of our members and he kept saying, you should, you should do a movie. And I, we kept saying, we know we should do a movie. And um, so after some investigation, we found Film by Bike and we did it in a small theater the first year. We had about 150 people there and people loved it. It was part of our Boise Bike Week. Um, and as probably many people on this call know, Boise has an incredibly strong biking community. And um, so we had great attendance and a lot of fun. And so we decided to go bigger the next year. And we went to the historic theater that Aileen mentioned, which is bikeable and walkable. It's right in the heart of our downtown area. And we had 400 people there. Um, so then we decided to go really big the next year, which was this last winter and um, had about 700 people there. And I think, Part of it was the promotion that we did because we did a ton of promotion. We worked really your hard at it. Every, your posters were everywhere on the street. <laughs> that was so cool. Thanks, yeah. Um, and in lots of interviews. I think, Aileen, we had you on the radio, I think, doing mm -hmm. an interview. So we had a lot of promotion. We also, also um, worked with some local filmmakers who did a local film called The Lieutenant. And so those guys came and spoke and we did a short clip of their movie. Uh, the it sounds like we might be losing. Um, because we're, because we work at the state level, we aren't, we don't have a huge presence in Boise. And so we wanted um, people to, to know who we are and to feel involved. We got great volunteers to help us out. We got all kinds of people to sponsor us. And a lot of people came up to me after the movie this year and said that they want to sponsor it next year. Oh, so, great. yeah, so it's really sort of integrated us into the, into the biking community, which is strong in Boise. Um, and we've just, you know, built this event that people love to come to. It's like having all of your best friends in one space for an evening of beer and biking and great conversations. I think it's so neat for, especially for an organization like yours to be showing film by bike because you do such important work, but let's be honest, lobbying is not sexy and it's behind the scenes, it's behind closed doors. So it's really hard for the community to grasp the magnitude of what you are doing on behalf of the bike community. And your film event is a way for all these people to come together and associate you with that, your organization with that vibrancy. So I think it's a really neat format for keeping you alive and active in the community in a way that people can see since they don't see a lot of the lobbying efforts. Agreed. And they don't want to really hear about it. They just want us to go do the work, <laughs> yeah. which is fine. <laughs> but it also allows us to relax that night and to just really enjoy, um, you know, what we care about and what we love and know that our work counts. And we're, you know, we're fine doing that component of it as long as we can have an evening with all of our biking friends. So, and we also invite legislators to the movie so they can kind of understand who we are and what we're what we're all about so it works out really well so as a statewide organization i know you guys really have a far reach and a lot of work cut out for you i know you've also helped some other cities in idaho get started with film events can you tell us a little bit about that process and how you guys helped get other cities hosting film by bike in idaho 
Oh, sure. So we have um, board members all over the state. And um, Idaho Falls is a much smaller community than Boise, but they have a really strong bike advocacy group there. And a board, we have a board member there who's the president of a local advocacy group. So he wanted to do film by bike in his town, and it was on a much smaller scale, but we formatted it basically the same way we did it in Boise, and it was a great success. They filled up a smaller theater, but it was big for Idaho Falls, and it had the same impact. It just pulled people together for a really great evening. They did the raffle, they had beer sales, you know, everything we did in Boise, and, um, and they loved it, and they're probably going to do it next year because of that sort of that um, energizing bike community feeling that it that it gives. That's great. Um, and just a reminder for the audience: if you have any questions for our guests here, for Vicky or Cynthia, you can leave those in the questions box on GoToWebinar. Or if you have any other questions about getting a bike fun movement started in your community or how to host a film by bike event. We'd also love to hear from you if you're doing interesting things in your area that have been successful. Feel free to add those in the questions or the chat box and let us know what's working well where you live. Now, one of my favorite examples is um, what Bike Bendigo does in Australia because I look at their feed and see the different bike fun events that they're doing. And they're not creating a lot of this from scratch. They are cherry picking from all over the world taking the best ideas from different areas, things that they love, that they see other communities and other cities doing, and then they're molding and shaping those for their own community. So instead of starting from scratch, there's so many of us out there doing great work. We should really be collaborating together and sharing ideas and resources, then making it relevant for our own communities, which is a big core feature of Film My Bike in that we have the content, we have the movies, we've put it into this great format that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The format of the films takes the viewers on a lovely journey of highs and lows and laughs and tears and contemplative moments, and it ends on a high note. And we really put all that together, but the way you format your event is up to you. And I love hearing about the way each of these folks is organizing those events where they live, because it's really all about sculpting an event that's going to resonate with your community. We're just going to give you that content and the support to help make it happen. So I'm curious to hear from both of you, Cynthia and Vicky, a little bit more about what the what you would say has been the biggest reward of hosting a film festival event to support your bike advocacy efforts. I jump. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we've used it. Oh gosh, there's so many things, but the very first one we didn't have a name yet so we did a poll from people to actually have a name for the bike walk tompkins for the advocacy community and it could have been wabbit it could have been wike and bike bike it's like a tompkins which would have been really fun but maybe not so great for lobbying but it really i think involved everybody and it really it strengthened the sense of community and that we're working together so i would say that's been a biggest part for us is that we've come together and feel supported and um, like we have a, some solidarity in what we're trying to do. And the other thing is these films have, you know, we saw the intersection paintings from Portland for the first time in a film, and then we've done them here. And we, we needed to talk to people about protected bike lanes, so we had protected bike lanes. And there was, um, and then now we can talk about it here and people know what we're talking about because they can see it. In images are so important. Um, uh, there's a few other things. I, there's there's so many things that are great, but I would say at this point we've had five films that have been made locally that we can show in our first half, and people love seeing themselves. We love capturing some of the really fun things that we're doing. Some are about Streets Alive. Some of them were about Ribs, our recycled bicycle place. Just the community becomes a stronger and stronger and stronger community and that makes it possible to do all kinds of fun things together and all kinds of hard kind of lobbying advocacy things but we do it with a better tone it's changed the tone and i think that's why we're having a lot more success that's great and for you cynthia what would you say are some of the biggest rewards of hosting a film festival event oh gosh I, you know um first of all obviously it's a great fundraiser and it's a fun fundraiser so there's that, but it's also 
really raised our visibility as an advocacy group. And, you know, we live in Boise, that's our community, except a lot of those people don't know who we are. And that was before Film by Bike. And now they do know who we are and they are interested in our work and they become members and they want to help us and volunteer for us. So it's definitely um, improved our notoriety among advocates and that allows us to do better work. Yeah. That's great. That's really great to hear. Um, I'm curious to know for both of you guys, what is happening in your areas for bike fun? Are you seeing any new movements happening? I know coffee outside is really catching on. It's not exclusively a bike event, but it tends to be cyclists. I love seeing just new and unique ways for people to gather and talk about bikes and, and share resources. What's happening where both of you guys live? Oh, I have a great one. We have Halloween bike rides now, and this is not us. We know the artists, and it's just made um, huge sculptures that are the lighted bike rides, so they go out in the dark. We have this section of town that's filled with trick-or-treaters, and now there's 20, 30 sculptures that are going through on bike, and that's, it's just amazing. I wish you could all see it, and we're gonna make a film about it someday. And I then we have, that. yeah, we have solstice rides, so the winter, particularly the winter, the shortest ride on the shortest day, um, those are two really fun, really artsy things that are going on. And we're gonna do more intersection paintings. And I've just heard through Tom Knight, who used to live in Portland, that we are going to be looking for an artist to create a huge, like signature art sculpture, moving art, kinetic art sculpture with some bike theme around that. So, there's a lot of nice energy right here, right now. That Sounds makes like it. <laughs> That's exciting. How about for you, Cynthia? What's up in Boise or in Idaho in general these days for some of those more creative elements? Oh my gosh, we have so many biking events coming and going around um, Boise, especially. Well, the newest one is the Goathead Fest. I don't know who knows what goatheads are, but they are really a problem in um, our foothills. Mm -hmm. So we've started a festival to try to <laughs> try to get them pulled and um, prizes for bringing in the most plants. Um, and it's turned into sort of a really fun weekend. Um, we have that, we have the Boise Green Bike Races. We have a big ride coming up um, in July. That's a uh, Grand Fondo and with a couple other things. So there's just, you know, really no shortage of alley cat rides and pedal power parades and just a million things going on. That's exciting. I've heard about the the Goathead Fest. I, I learned about it when I visited Boise in January and it just sounds like a really fun way to take a serious problem of these little prickers that get stuck in your wheel, your tires and uh, make a whole festival around it. I think it's hilarious. And you know, the funny thing was I didn't originally think of it as in terms of collecting the plants, I kept envisioning that people were picking up the actual <laughs> little prickers and creating bags and bags and bags of those. And I thought, how are they ever going to make any progress? And then, of course, it's that they're actually pulling the plants and getting them. <laughs> yeah, you can get more prickers if you pull the plants. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, so what else is on the horizon for both of you guys? What are you working towards this summer? Summer is just about here. It's a great time for people to be on their bikes and active. It's the easiest time of year to get people inspired to ride. So what is coming up for you guys for the summertime? Um, this summer here in Ithaca, we have another slate of bike champions, and one of them uh, works with all her friends at Senior GEC. That's a, that's a GEC is Greater Ithaca Activity Center, wonderful downtown activity center. And she, she gets all, all of the people that are would be considered seniors, 60 and over. Some of them haven't ridden for a number of years. Some of them haven't ridden forever. And we do big events down at Stewart Park and anybody who wants to learn how to ride in that senior group comes down. So we've had 30 last year at the one and we're probably gonna have many more. So just seeing people who you don't typically think of to reach out to and other people in the community learning how to teach people who are having balance issues and it's, the, it's such a lovely social time. Um, and Stewart Park is one of our signature parks. So it's right on the lakefront in, this, in the south end of town. The waterfront trail that was, con that was completed about four years ago goes through there and it's, it's idyllic. And there'll be a lot of other things with other communities in a similar fashion. And one of the nice things is as we're growing, 
the event planning isn't all on just our very small staff. Now we have these bike champions who are going out and we support them. So great. I would say senior day, senior day at Stewart Park and the second graders from BJM, also a downtown school, are going out next week. So both both of them are going to be at the parks at the same time. Fun. And that's what we're going to be doing, getting people who never ride out on bikes. That's great. Cynthia, how about you? What are you guys, what's on the advocacy horizon? What are you guys lobbying for? And what are some of your big initiatives right now? Well, um, so I spend a lot of time traveling in the summer around Idaho. And right now I'm in beautiful Sandpoint, Idaho, up in north up north in the panhandle um, and I'm visiting all the communities that have received some funding through some effort that we did at the state level so they're putting in new sidewalks and pathways so we go out and we meet with the communities and take pictures and um, get out I brought my bike with me on this trip so we'll be exploring some of the trails up here in the mountains while we're here and tootling around town on our bike so it's a great it's nice in the summer. We get to get out of the office and get out to rural Idaho, which is really beautiful and mountainous. That is that sounds lovely. It sounds like it a great is. place to be right now. <laughs> and not a bad place to be uh, popping around for advocacy work either. It's Maybe really hard, but I do it. <laughs> in person discussion, we all go to Idaho. That sounds yeah. really lovely. <laughs> hey, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. It's yeah. a six, six and a half hour straight shot drive from here to Boise. Uh, and that's got me all fired up that it's really not that far away. Um, so, because you went to Boise and now you have to come to Ithaca. I'm, I'm working with Tom on that actually. So oh, I'm very excited. <laughs> um, is there anything, Cynthia and Vicki, anything we haven't talked about yet that you guys want to make sure that we mention to our viewers while we're all together here on the webinar with the Bike League? Let's see, we're working on a blueprint for better bicycling. So that's the big planning effort. And I would say all this stuff that we've been doing means that people who might not have talked to us 10 years ago talk to us, you know, and and we're trying to double bicycling. Actually, Richard's trying to make bicycling normal, just one part of every day, kind of like Portland has done, you know, or Amsterdam. Um, so I really, I love hearing what other people are doing, and I hope we can have more, more kinds of discussions that um, allow us to learn from each other because that really moves the moves the needle for us. So um, we're working hard. It's figuring out what should we do here, and we're going to steal everything you guys are doing. <laughs> Want to hear more? <laughs> Is that? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm um, share. So, share good good stories. That would be good. And I'd like to just say something about our film by bike experience. Um, you know, if anybody's hesitant to do it, just give it a go. Just do it that first time and understand the process. Understand it's not that hard. We just did it and we can we perfect it every year and it gets easier every year. We've got a pretty good system down now. It's not perfect, but it works really well. We have a, a lot of fun. Um, I would highly recommend that people give it a shot. The films are incredible. People are still coming up to me on the street and talking about some of those films. So they have um, a long life to them. And it is such an easy way to bring your community together. And people, they will have a good time. So there's really no downside to it that I can think of. So that would be my recommendation. Cynthia, you're so right. That the films are great. It really, I, I agree completely. Everybody should do it. It's really, just wait, just really wait till you see next year's collection. It's even better. <laughs> We're really, really excited about what we had the opportunity to show here in Portland this year because we made it a true dedication towards bringing to the stage and to the screen the voices of people who are often left out of the conversation. So lots of great representation and diversity and stories coming from those people not being told about them from outsiders and just a really really vibrant neat mix of movies i think you guys are going to love them yeah. uh, that program will switch over in july so we'll have the new films ready then it'll be very exciting i'm thinking we should do it twice here just so we don't have to wait until the winter <laughs> yeah that's a fun idea <laughs> more than one program right so we could do it twice <laughs> we've already booked the theater in boise so we're ready for you aileen awesome that's great i hope i can make it out again that was so fun good uh, 
Um, well, I want to thank both of you for joining us here today and sharing more about your experience hosting Film by Bike as a way to strengthen your bike communities and bring in important fundraising dollars for what you guys are doing. Uh, it's been really neat to see the way both of your events have grown over the years. I also want to thank Bill from the League of American Bicyclists for inviting us on today to talk about this. You know, Bike Fun has, as you know, as you all know, I am such a big fan of it, but sometimes it's hard to get started. So. A little easy event like Film by Bike is a great way to just kind of kickstart events and then you'll be amazed with what cascades down from there once you get some of those efforts started. We're here for you, Film by Bike. We've, I've been involved in advocacy since the late 90s. I like to keep things fun. So I'm here to really hold your hands and support you through this process of strengthening your bike communities. And I wish you all the best of luck in the great efforts that you are doing to get more people on bikes and make it safer for us out there. Sweet. Thanks so much. I, um, I know we have like four minutes left, so I just want to just double check. Uh, there were questions that were submitted. I don't know if you saw those, Aileen. I didn't. Oh, I didn't see. I couldn't see any of them. Okay. 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 So yeah, I think I think we can, if it's okay with the, if, with you all, the panelists, I'd, I'd love to get just to answer a few of these. Like one thing is like, how much does it cost for a group to, to host uh, Film by Bike? That's what they want it, to know. Uh, yeah. So our main cost is built around nonprofits, though we do have a for-profit rate. And we also offer an automatic grant to anyone who is a NICA team. So if you are a NICA affiliated team, you don't have to fill out a grant application. Um, if you get a grant, it's $320. Otherwise, it's $420 as our current rates. Um, and then what comes with that is all the promotional graphics and the bike movie files as well. Awesome. Um, another one is, uh, this is great inspiration, uh, they say, um, in one community where I work, we need help being patient while we can take an immature bike community to the next phase with a too small core of volunteers. Any suggestions or advice on how to happily weather this early stage and, and move to the next one and maybe more engagement in, in getting those, those folks involved? Yeah, that can be really challenging. Uh, one thing that we found really helpful is we we implemented a month-long bike festival in our early days, and it still exists to this day. It started in 2002, and the format was a core organizing committee just did the basic work and then brought in people who had the ideas to lead an event. So those people leading events didn't also need to come to meetings. They never needed to come to a meeting. So it was sort of this hub and spoke model. It was so vibrant that at the end of that month and eight months of planning, we were fired up and ready to do more. So thinking of a structure where you're not requiring everyone to come to meetings, meetings can really be a burden, um, but finding ways to leverage people's enthusiasm and give them the tools they need to be successful, they're more likely to get involved if there isn't as much of a burden of some of the admin and other types of work. So finding ways to get people excited volunteering in a way that really meets them where they are, where their skills and interests are, foster those skills and interests, and be really grateful and thankful. And that's a great way to catapult and get more and more people involved. Also, these bike fun events are a great way. People come, they have fun, and they think, oh, maybe I should help out next time, or maybe there's a way for me to get more involved. Right on. Um, a couple more. Anna asks, do, do you find do you find that if you show in the summer or better biking months that it's better timing versus in the winter when there's you know like fewer people biking? It really varies. Um, for us here in Portland, we know that in summertime, we have precious few beautiful days and our community is outside, working in the yard, riding bikes, kayaking and all that other stuff. So we find that wintertime actually tends to be a little better and some other communities find this as well because there's not as much competition for other activities and things happen. The wintertime or the spring can be a little bit more dead and it's a fun time to get people out and, and to the movies and give them something to do. Awesome. And the last one, um, I'm guessing this is, um, you can answer this pretty easily. Uh, would film by bike movies work on outdoor projection screens? Yeah, we're so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're really excited about that. We've got a couple groups that are working on some outdoor shows. It's a theater quality file, so it's a very high quality file. That, you know, the tech details really depend on what you set up, as long as you have a good projector and then you wait till it's a little bit darker out. Um, it can look really cool and be a really fun experience to do a bike in movie. Awesome. Well, thanks. That's it. Thanks. Thanks everyone for participating. And again, thanks to our awesome uh, presenters uh, sharing um, sharing uh, this, these great stories and their their experiences and knowledge with all of us. So, thanks again. Thanks, Bill. I appreciate it.
Thanks, Thank Bill. You. Thanks, Eileen, for the inspiration. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.